Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is really different. I have some major news, some major things going on in my life that I'm so excited about. I needed to do an intro for this type of series that I'm about to start. If we can do a drum roll, please. I'm moving out of Mississippi. Yes. I'll be showing y'all my moving process. Like I'm moving completely out the state. I'm gonna tell y'all in just a minute how that's gonna work and how that's gonna flow. But I wanna bring y'all along. So in this whole vlog and this whole episode one, I wanna take y'all along the journey and like show y'all how I'm gonna be packing up, what I'm gonna be doing, like bring you along. Like it's a vlog, come with me, live my life with me. I'm leaving, get in the, you know what, up out of here. And today it is actually April 1st. Actually, my friend gave me the idea because I've just been so ready, like, I'll get into that in just a minute, but I've just been so ready to leave basically. And I've been texting her like every day we text and I'm like, I'm just so ready to go. I'm counting, I have a countdown on my phone. So today it's literally 43 days. And every day I'm like 45 days, uh, 46 days. It started off, it started out at 60 days. So some time has uh, went by since I made the decision and went and toured everything and got some things in order for me to move. Um, but yeah, she gave me the idea. She was just like, you should do a diary of it. Cause I was like, I want to do a YouTube series. I just don't know how to go about it. Like, I don't just want to pop up and be there, you know, and just start doing content there. I don't just want to start po posting pictures there on Instagram and people be like, what, where did this come? Like, I want people to see my story and like be inspired by that. Um, the same way that I get on YouTube, the same way I get on Instagram and I look for those female influences and, you know, to inspire me to be better, to push, to keep, uh, striving, you know, even in my tough times, like I get on Instagram, I get on YouTube and it does lift me up. Part about it is that we have people to look up to that, you know, we aspire to, um, be sim, be similar, like, um, you know, like for me, as far as like seeing, uh, black women having their own businesses and seeing, uh, women being married and traveling and, uh, you know, living in a city where they have so many different things to do. And they're going to the farmer's market and they're, they're able to go out and eat at really nice restaurants and just, it's a lifestyle thing. And being here in Mississippi, it's just, it actually has never been it. And I guess since this is an intro video, or whatever, I'm gonna just do a little background check. You know, I grew up in Gautier, Mississippi. If a lot of people, I think most of my followers are from the coast or they actually do personally know me right now, but for future me, once I get more subscribers and everything and my followers that are watching, I'm from Gautier, Mississippi. That is on the coast. I grew up there basically all my life. I was born in Florida, Tallahassee, Florida. We moved from there to Chicago when I was young, but all of my elementary years, grade school years was in Gautier. When I graduated high school in 2013, I didn't want to be on the coast anymore. Like I knew I wanted to go off, but I didn't want to commit and do a four year school like a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I knew because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I didn't really know myself back then. I didn't know myself at all back then like I know myself now, like not even close. Like I know myself like here now, back then I knew myself like this. So I didn't know anything, but I had went to this girls exploring math and science. If anybody, um, it was called gyms. If anybody else out there that went to that, it was at South Alabama and they took us to different things. Like we went to a forensic room and like was doing stuff with that. It was like doing chemistry stuff. They had nursing, doctor things. And they took us to the, therapy gym and it was just like a normal gym but you know they were talking about rehab and all that stuff and I was really interested because I knew I didn't want to do a job where I just sit or like be at a computer or just stare at something like I'm ADD not ADHD but ADD were like focusing and like doing the same tasks or the same thing over and over becomes redundant like I need something you know 
I need to be moving basically, or now that I've learned, I need to be creative and be moving, not doing the same thing. But anyways, so young me back then was like, oh, I want to do this or whatever. So my mom uh, is a nurse. She's actually a nurse practitioner right now. But back then she was a nurse and she was just starting out basically. And um, she was working around uh, physical therapists and PTAs and she started asking questions. Long story short, PTA school was only going to be two, a two year program, which would have been, which ended up being three years for me because I had um, to do my prerequisites and compared to a eight year, basically seven year program, if I was to do PT. So my mom was like, you should definitely do you know, the three years start off to see if you like it. And then you can always go black back, blah, blah, blah. So that was my plan from the time I was basically like in eighth grade. I think we went there. I think we were in middle school. It was either eighth grade or ninth grade. One of those, that was like my focus. Like, you know, I want to be a physical therapist assistant. Like I, that's what I want to do. So I focused on that. And then when I got like a sophomore, I started narrowing the schools. Like I didn't want to, I wasn't thinking about going out of state right away, but I knew I didn't want to be on the coast. So I was looking at like um, Pearl River, which is here in Hattiesburg where I live now. I was looking at Bishop, which is in Mobile. That was only like 40 minutes, 45 minutes from Gaucher, where I was from. And then there was Hines and Jackson and there was Meridian Community College in Meridian. I narrowed Bishop because off the list immediately because it was too close. And then it was an expedited program. So it was going to take only a year. And I just wanted more of like a college experience, but not the money of a college experience and not the commitment of a full four year college experience. So Bishop was like an automatic, no, nah, too close to home, too short, too expedited, whatever. So then um, there was... Hines and my mom was like she just didn't feel comfortable with me going to Jackson like for whatever reason she was just like no let's look at Meridian in Pearl River so I like Hasburg I knew a little bit about growing up but not too much but Meridian sounded really a pleasing number one it's funny I'm about to say this but my high school sweetheart at the time high school sweetheart now I guess you would say now but high high school boyfriend then um he he was from Meridian and his family lived there before they had moved down there for his junior year so that made me even more interested and then when I went and toured the campus um it was more set up like uh, a campus like there was apartments on there there were dorms versus Pearl River here in Hattiesburg um, I would have to get an apartment to, you know, get a townhome because there's nothing on campus. It's just like uh, the community college we have at home. It's just a local community college. There was no students living there, residing there, basically. Let's just say that. I ended up going to Meridian Community College from 2013 to 2016. And I finished the PTA program in 2016. And became licensed and I started working um, I graduated out when I went off to school there I was 18 I was one of the youngest in our class in 21 when I graduated so I started in a working career not a job now think about this most 21 year olds are either still in college or you know and they're working part-time or they're just working just a regular job like you're 21, you normally don't have like your life together. And I'm not saying I had my life together by any means just because I was starting off in a career, but I was 21 and I started off in an actual career. So I moved back home to the coast and I started working. I started working as a physical therapist assistant and um, staying at my, at my parents' house and traveling. And that's what I did. And that's what I actually wrote down. I will have to get my thing to show y'all. I'll show it in one of the clips.
Um, but I actually wrote that down. Like I've always been a writer. I write down all my dreams, all my thoughts have to go somewhere. And um, when I was 18, I wrote down that I was gonna go to school, be a physical therapist assistant. I was gonna do traveling therapy. I was gonna travel and buy a condo, all these things. Like I had all this stuff written down and I actually did that. I traveled, I was 21 and I traveled for those four years. And then most people um, know that are following me. Um, I ended up getting fired because of a um, incident that happened at work during um, the Black Lives Matter movement with George Floyd. I made a statement and my boss at the time fired me the same day without a reason. He didn't give me a reason why. You can see that video linked down below or go to my channel in my videos. Um, but that happened uh, last year in 2020, June 1st, 2020 is actually when it happened. And before that, I was actually um, going through some things where I was trying to find my passion. Um, I loved what I did. Um, I enjoyed my patience and I was good at it. Um, I'm a very nice person, very well mannered person. My parents raised me amazingly. So it was easy for me to connect and treat those patients like I would want to treat my parent, want someone to treat my parents or like I would want to be treated. It was, it was easy, but I don't know how to say this. Oh, you know, this, what the heck? This is not a full video. This is a freaking episode, like a vlog. I'm gonna just be real. I just felt restricted and like confined. Um, like I was limited. I just didn't feel, okay, you know how when you know that you're working your purpose or giving your all, you like feel that you are? I, I felt like I wasn't living up to a, a potential. I felt like even though it was a career, you know, when you're doing a career, you, it should be something you wake up and want to do. It's something that you go to sleep thinking about. It's something that you're on the weekends like, how can I get better? How can I? It was none of that. Um, I was living it for those whole four years that I was doing it, it was a job, even though it was a career technically, like that is a career field. It's not just a job. There's, uh, you know, certain levels and then there's certain specialties. There's a whole, di like, there's a lot to it. It's not just like it's a normal just job. And I was, I wasn't moving and living like it was because it wasn't to me. I wasn't waking up every day hungry to go to work. I wasn't waking up looking forward to go to work for anything. What I was actually doing, my actual duties and work wasn't pleasing to me. It wasn't fun. And the schooling was more fun and I was looking forward to, it was fun every day because I'm a person that likes to be challenged. I like to learn. So school, the schooling was challenging. So every day it was like, it was something to do, but actually working in it, y'all, it's not for me. It was so boring and so draining. And the medical field I learned is just not for me. Um, I don't wanna say that I'm an artist because I haven't actually got to tap into that just yet. I have behind the scenes, but I haven't you know, reached a certain mark and potential. I see myself you know, being more like, I do consider myself on an artist level because I look at things differently and I like to express myself, my nails, my hair. Like it was just certain things where people were doing it. It's just normal. And I don't wanna, not bashing anybody. This is my personal story. This is Jamila Swopes, Jamila Mendisa Naila Swopes personal story. So nobody get it twisted. Nobody try to think that I'm saying something bad about people that are physical therapist assistants or are in the medical field or try to act like I'm better than that. I'm not trying to say that. I'm telling my story and my life. This is my life. This is current April 1st, 2021. This is my life. Like this, it's not a joke. It's nothing uh, funny about it or to just be sitting here just blabbing about. Like this is what I realized, but I realized um, that I'm just different. And that job, it wasn't satisfying me and it wasn't meeting my level a potential that I could do. Like, I know I could do more. And not only could I do more, but I saw myself doing more. And I just never knew those whole four years, 
I was praying to God so much. Um, it actually took me a year of working that I realized, okay, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I graduated in 2016. In 2017, it was actually 11 months um, into it. And I was like, I can't see myself doing this for the rest of my life. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life, but this is not it. Like I knew that in 2017, but I was making good money and I was able to travel. I stopped working full time and I started doing travel jobs and PRN gigs. And I was able to go to Costa Rica, go to the Bahamas, go to Denver, go all across America and out of the country whenever I wanted. And I had the funds to do it. I was getting paid really well. Um, but going to work, I was not satisfied um, and I wasn't um, enjoying it. And I know most, we can't say most Americans do enjoy their work, but the few that do, they love what they do. The ones that do, like, they love it. And they wake up with a hunger and a passion and that's what I want because ever since I've been little, anything I've ever done, that's the type of attitude I had in it. So I knew right then, like, okay, I need to start thinking what I wanna do, what interests me. So I started, I didn't know at the time that it wasn't medical. So I was just like nutrition, dermatologist, maybe medical school. Like I dabbled with so many different ideas. Lifestyle coach, um, y'all, chef. I think a chef at one time, just recently with what happened to me, like um, doing all the protests and all that. I was thinking a lawyer, but let me touch on that real quick. I am a very... Like, okay, so I'm zero or hundred. It can't be too boring, but it can't be too stressful. Like it can't be too much and too boring. PTA, boring for me. I'm speaking on myself, remember that. And lawyer, when I started thinking about it, like the daily activity, and then I wanted to be a civil rights lawyer, like that type. And I started looking at um, the people I was following on Instagram and seeing like the certain things they were going through. And I was just like, trying to think about my life. Like I knew, I know, I don't want to say new. I know I want to get married. I know I want children. How's that going to look with this and having to do the, these different, like I just started thinking more and I'm like, I don't want to be stressed either. And I like, we need those people. We need the PTAs. We need the lawyers, but it's when you're living your life, you have to do things for you. Like I had to start looking in the mirror and say, what does Jamila want to do? What do, what does Jamila wake up every day and think about? What does Jamila go to sleep thinking about or looking at what am I always researching? What is, you know, I had to start thinking about me and stop thinking about just short term or um, trying to play a certain role for family or trying to do something that I knew was going to be um, a good job, good money, you know, just being basic. Like, that's not me. Like, obviously that's not me. And it wasn't cutting it because I wasn't satisfied. Now, the best way I can explain this is if you're in a relationship and you're just, you're just in it, like you're in it and the person's not appeasing you anymore. Nothing about them interests you anymore. You're going through the motions, you're going on dates and stuff, but you're just really not enjoying it. And it's like, do I stay in a relationship because of the amount of years I've put in and the work that I've done and you know, all this, do I stay in it? Even though, you know, it's done me like this and it's gotten me this far and I've had these hiccups, but do I still stay in the relationship? So it's like, that's what I battled with since I was let go from my job. Do I, do I stick this out? Even though I know that this isn't pleasing me, that this, that this isn't suiting me, that I want more and I can do better. You know, y'all been in those relationships. And with me, the relationship was my career it was, you know, I had to come to the mirror and come to terms and say, no, I actually don't. And if I did, I would still be trying to do it and still be trying to pursue it. But it's obvious. It was obvious back then. And it was even more evident after he let me go that like, no, it's, it's really not. Um, so it's actually funny now because it's like that happened and that hurt me. And I was just like, why me? Like I, I go to work. I do everything that I'm supposed to. My patients love me. Like I treat them so good. I'm so nice to people, you know, and everybody thinks that in life, like bad things happen to good people. That's normal. You know, at the time it hurt so much and everything. I just didn't understand. And it cut off my supply. Like I bought my home, um, May of 2019, then June of 2020, I get fired. I've been paying my bills. I've been doing everything 
by myself. Now I don't have any income. It's a pandemic. What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was just, it was very confusing and very hurtful. But once I got through the motion of the hurt and the betrayal and the embarrassment and uh, just all those emotions, it's like I sat down and I talked with God and he reminded me, you didn't want to do it anyway. So you didn't lose anything. I, it's like I took you away from it so you can focus on, so you can learn and focus on who you are and what you actually want. Like it was a blessing in disguise, basically. Um, so all that time last year, you know, going through those emotions of what happened and everything, I've just been growing physically and mentally and emotionally. And it's been up and down, y'all. Jesus Christ. Let me... Let me take a breather. <laughs> oh my God, y'all. I don't want to cry. I really, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to be strong through this intro. But it has been so hard to... I said I wasn't going to cry. It's been so hard to be so young and to have to be so strong and like stand my ground and stand firm because of the position that I'm in. You know, I'm not like most, you know, young people, I have obligations. It's not just like it's rent. It's not just like um, I can, I'm staying with my parents, you know? I have a mortgage, I have real bills. This was real life. So, you know, going through that, dealing with relationship things. I just give a blurb on this because I'm gonna do a separate video one day about all the trauma and all the relationship drama that I've experienced in my 20s. Yeah, during the midst of uh, being fired and being let go from my job, I was dealing with a breakup from a year. We were together a year and um, he was actually living here and it was a very nasty or not nasty, messy breakup. It wasn't good. I've actually never had a good breakup. It's always been drama with all of them. Like I said, Comment down below if you would love to hear some story times. I have a whole bunch of different ones. Just say that I'm, comment, I'm here for the relationship story time. And I'll just pick one. And girls, honey, boo, child, I got some tea for y'all. Like, I can laugh about it now because I'm over it and I understand I'm through it. But like I said, at the time, I was dealing with losing my partner um, and all the emotions with that, plus the job, plus I was thinking, you know, I knew I didn't want to do therapy anymore. So I was like, hey, this is a chance. Let me look into law. So I started going to a four-year college and then I got into that and I started thinking, I realized, oh no. So all last year, burb, all last year, it was up and down emotions, roller coasters. It was the year starting off good. You know, it's January. Everything's starting off good. We got Mardi Gras coming up. Mardi Gras good. Then boom, pandemic. Uh-oh, not having enough hours at work. You know, don't know if I'm going to still have a job, whatever. Oh, the hours come back up. Everything's good. Then boom, relationships, drama, relationship drama, relationship ended, relationship drama. Then, oh, I think everything's going to be okay. I'm trying to come out of it. Then boom, get fired for no reason. And it don't even make sense. And trying to come out of that. Oh, I'm going to school. I'm going to school then. Y'all, it was just, I don't even want to keep, because <laughs> that's just so slow, but literally thing after thing after thing. Then I realized, okay, okay, I'm trying to finish this semester out and just try to figure out something else next semester, whatever. Then I got sick. I got COVID, um, end up having a fibroid. I was bleeding for like a month, a whole month straight. I didn't finish my semester, was missing because of pain, because of sickness. I missed like the whole month of October for classes, had to withdraw, and that's how my year ended. So the whole year, it was the most, it was the most traumatic emotions, the most traumatic experiences back to back that I have ever, my whole 26 years experienced in one year, all that happened to me, all of it back to back to back and i just was trying to come up like i'm swimming i'm trying to come up from air i'm trying to breathe you know and i'm just trying to have my faith keep steady like 
And each time I just get drowned, I just drown, I just drown. But I'm not gonna keep harping on the negative. I'm not gonna keep talking about that because it's over. And the new year came and I just, I really sat down, like I said, and I started asking myself those tough questions. So for anybody out there, you're young, or even if you're old, you don't know what strives you. You wanna find your purpose. You wanna find your gift that God put you on this earth to do. Wait, wake up or get a sheet of paper in your notes. Wake up every morning. What's the first thing you think about? Write that down. When you hit the pillow, you're in the dark at night, getting ready to go to sleep. You're watching TV, winding down for the night, drinking your tea, whatever. That's what I like to do. What are you thinking about at night? What are you scrolling on Pinterest looking at? Looking at? What are you scrolling? What pages on Instagram are you going to looking at? Like, It's funny because it's always been inside me. It's always inside of us. Like, we're born with our gift. We're born with our purpose. You know, God gives us that when we're born, but it's life that makes you discover it. And it's the ups and it's the downs. And through the downs, I found that. And I haven't got to say where I'm moving yet or what that is, what I'm actually doing, but I did a drum roll earlier. Another drum roll. Say it, it is beauty, you guys. Um, I have been dabbling in the beauty industry, well, with the beauty industry. Started off when I went off to college in 2013, I started watching YouTube. And it started with my natural hair journey. I wanted to stop getting perms and long story short, that's, I would go on YouTube and I would look up um, hair, hair journeys, um, hairstyles, natural hairstyles, all that stuff. And that's how it started. And then I learned about makeup and then I learned about skincare. And then now it's been nails and each year it's evolved. Like my curiosity for skin, different skincare treatments, different skincare products, um, different hair products, the textures of different products and what is formulated with um, styles, like different nail design styles, different hairstyles. Over the years, each year it's progressed and I never got to sit down and actually think about it because I just thought it was normal. Like I thought every month when I'm like, okay, how, am I, how do I want to get my nails? What look do I want to go to with my hair? You know, wanting to get waxes, looking at different ways to lighten skin discoloration. And I thought it was normal. I thought every girl's like, you know, wants to be top tier. Like I've always been like that. Like to T, I'm like, I'm keeping my hair clean. I'm, I used to get my eyebrows waxed before I got them microbladed. But I'm like, I'm keeping my hair done. I'm keeping my eyebrows clean, like nails done. Since high school, like I've been on that. That's just something I love to do. And I just thought every girl does it. I'm a girl. It's a girl thing. No, that's actually not true. Some girls don't too much care about that. Maybe only for celebrations or maybe not even then. Like it's an afterthought for me. What did I say earlier? What do you wake up and think about? I wake up in the morning ready to do my skincare routine. Y'all, I am so dead now. Actually, my skincare routine is uploaded. I will leave that link down below if you would like to watch that. Matter of fact, don't if you wanna watch it, go watch it because yeah, it's some gems in there, some amazing products I've discovered and I have some good dupes that are actually cheaper than products that I was using before. So go watch that video, girl. Go, go get some um, information because trust me, I've spent some money on some expensive products and I've figured out a good, clean routine that works for my skin and keeps my breakout breakouts down y'all i am a beautified girl like and then it's funny because when i was in seventh or eighth grade i was so intrigued with modeling like i was so in tune with my sexuality not saying it like that but i was so in tune with my body and like different angles like me and my friend we would do like set up like photo shoots like this was back when you had like the nikon cameras and stuff and we would prop it up and we would pose and like get different shirts and we would like do like photo shoots, like take different angles. Like I have this one picture, I wish I could find it. If I could find it, I'm gonna insert it. But it was on MySpace and I was like in the doorway and I did like the, you know how Tyra talks about like the booty hunch, or whatever. I had this cute mini skirt on and an uh, Aeropostale shirt. I used to love Aeropostale girl. Like Aeropostale was my jam. You could not tell me nothing. I had a Air, uh, different Air, color Aeropostale shirt for every day of the week. Like you could not tell me nothing, boo. So <laughs> I would get rushed off the bus, hurry up to watch 106 in Park. And I would stare at those girls and like their hair, different hairstyles, their lashes and their makeup. I'm like, 
they're so pretty. And I'm like, I want to do that. Like I even told my dad, he like, he went around the room one time and like asked us all what we want to do. I told him I wanted to be a model. I'm like, I want to be like the girls in the videos. And he was like, no, you're not gonna, you know, cause he like thinking like the hip hop videos, like you're not gonna be a video vixen, what the hell? But I didn't know, when, being so young, I didn't know how to express that, but I was just intrigued with the beauty and the create like beautiful people. Like I love looking at beautiful women, beautiful guys, beautiful things like, it intrigues me and I love making myself beautiful. So long story short, it's like, I, st I started thinking to myself, like January, I'm like, if I love to get up and do my skincare routine so much, if I love to go get my waxes, it's like a whole day event that I schedule my hair, my haircut now, my nails, my waxes. It's like a pamper day for me. I'm like, I wouldn't mind doing this to people. Like I love doing it for myself. Why would I, why would I not do this to people and get paid to do it and then learn how to do it? And I get to do it to myself for free. So I'm like, it clicked and it was like, boom. <laughs> like, like all the light bulbs and fireworks and everything went off and i'm like bitch this is what you should have been doing seven years ago and it's seven i say seven years because i started um school like i said school took three years and i was working for four years from 2013 to 2016 was school. From 2016 to 2020, I worked in the field. And that's seven years. So seven years of my life, I was doing something while the whole time I had this passion burning inside me that I didn't even tap into and didn't even know about. But I'm thinking it's normal. Like, it's normal for me to just be looking up what are the ceramides and uh, B AHAs and BHAs and like I watched you these YouTube videos like to the T and I'm thinking oh every girl does this no every girl does not do that every boy does not do that like this is something I'm interested in this is something that I want to learn and that I can see myself being good at so long story short I knew I never wanted to stay in Mississippi as much as I was traveling I knew I didn't want to be a PTA forever so God really blessed me when that happened, when he allowed that man to fire me because God allowed him to fire me. He did not fire me. God is in control. When you're a child of God, God is in control. So he allowed him to let me go and drop me, to pick me up and place me into my destiny. And my destiny is beauty. So I'm going to beauty school, esthetician and nail, nail school starting June 1st. 2021. Now, does anybody remember the dates and the significance in that? I got fired June 1st, 2020, was let go. And I'm starting my new passion June 1st, 2021. Who doesn't believe in God? Who doesn't think there is a God? Whatever you want to call him or her, the universe, whatever you want to call the creator and the being that's orchestrating our life and watching over us, whatever you want to call it. Are you, you're still questioning it? Like, that's not a coincidence. Nothing in life happens as a coincidence. And as much as I pray in, like, my relationship with God, like, I knew it was for a purpose. Like, I know as much good karma that I put out that it that wasn't just going to happen to me and I was just going to tumble and stay down. Um, so it's the fact that I found my purpose and, like, now I get to pursue that. And not only pursue that, but I knew I didn't want to be here. So I'm like, why would I go to beauty school here and be dulled down? Like, it's nothing to do here. Like, it's not many young people that's out, like, doing positive things that I see. This is my perspective. This is Jamila Mandisa, not Ela Swope's perspective. So whatever you think, you live in Mississippi or you live in Hattiesburg and you think otherwise, kudos to you, boo-boo. Kudos to you. I'm glad that you can be satisfied here and that it works for you. But like I say, for me, I look around. I come to my beautiful home, my gorgeous 1,300-square-foot home, and I'm like... What can I do other than be in this house and just be like, what is there to do? And I'm blessed and I'm thankful. Like, I love my home, but it's like I want to pick my home up and move it somewhere else and pick my body up and move it out the career and do something else. So I'm like, not married. I don't have any kids. What's keeping me confined to here? What's keeping me to try to still work in that field? Nothing. So I'm starting over. Scratch all of that. I don't want it. I've grown and... You know, I just realized what is for me and what isn't for me. And I'm just so thankful that God 
I'm just so thankful that he's given me the wisdom and like has given me the time and has been patient with me to be able to open my eyes to see that. Because if I didn't, I would just be lost still. And even though I'm not where I want to be, there's hope. There's a little small bit of hope that I can push forward. I can go do this and I can do this and I can get to that feeling and that um, perspective that I see for myself and that dream that I see for myself. Like it can become reality again, just like I saw myself being a PTA and owning a home. I did that. I did it. I saw it for myself. I manifested it. I wrote it down. It happened. I can do that again for where I see myself now, because the thing about life is you're not just going to, it's not just a straight line. It's a circle. We're always evolving. So where I saw myself at 15, 14, it's not going to be where I want to be at 26. It shouldn't. Like, if I'm evolving and getting better, I should want to be different. And I should be in a different place and a different mindset. And I'm trying to keep this short, y'all. But I'm just so happy and I'm just so ready. And I'm just so thankful and blessed. And it's April 1st. And I move on May 14th to Tampa, Florida to start my new career as an esthetician and a nail tech. And I start school. And the school's only four months. And... Then I get to start working and just waking up every day happy to go do what I want to do. And, you know, it's something that I can do that I can be good at. Like, it just wasn't for me, plain and simple. And that's okay. I spent the seven years in it and it wasn't for me. And that's okay. And if anybody is in a career and they're feeling the same thing and they're in the same position, it's okay. You're going to be okay. Like, I know it's going to be hard to start over. And I know you're going, going to be going through a lot of different emotions. And what will people think? What's my family going to say? What are outsiders going to say? Um, am I even going to like the new feel? Like the devil tries in so many different ways to distract you. But if that's what you're feeling, you have to follow your heart. And I know there's people in relationships that feel the same way. Oh, I've been with this man seven years, but he's not hes not feeding you your soul the way you need to be fed. You're not uh, pleased. It's not enjoyable. It's more work and draining than it is enjoyment. You got to get out. You got to go, whether it's a job or whether it's a relationship like you got to get out and you can do it and that's what I've just been telling myself that's been my mantra like I said it's April now it's four months into the year and God's shown up he's been here the whole time but last year I just did not feel him I just kept praying and talking so much and I'm like please God please like so many things like no energy just laying in the bed like it was days I would just lay in the bed for days and not get up like just confused y'all like and it's like finally it's just like he just it just popped up and I'm just like this is what I want to do and it's funny because I actually was thinking about moving to Houston like the idea whole started with me moving I didn't even know exactly what I want to do it started with Houston and it started with massage but it's God is so amazing y'all he's such a good guy because even in that he was still talking to me and still guiding me and as I'm talking now it's like He's like revealing to me even that, like, uh, you thought it was going to be Houston. You thought it was going to be massage. But even in that, I started questioning. Like, it's good to question yourself. It's good to talk to God, to, you know, to ask questions to yourself, to ask questions to him. And I'm just like, okay, Houston is not by any water. I, I love the water. I love the beach. All my travel places I travel to, water and beaches. Like, that is me in a T. Like I said, I was born in Florida. I feel like Florida is me. I am Florida. <laughs> like that's it and I just started thinking about Houston I'm like I'm gonna move there like I love going out like I've been to Houston like four times now and it's great for going out it's great for partying and you know it's a city like I do want to move to a bigger city and a bigger place than here in Hattiesburg Mississippi but Houston is just just a going out club type of deal like to see myself in those places and it just it just, I couldn't see myself there like full time. I just couldn't, couldn't commit to it fully. Like I, I flirted with the idea. You know, you see that cute guy and he is, girl, he is fine. He got the abs, he got the hair, he got the teeth. He got that smile when he smirk at you, you know, girl. But you just can't commit to him. You just can't see him as like a husband or a boyfriend. You just like, let's just flirt with you. So like I flirted with the idea of Houston, but I'm like, I can't see myself there. So the new passion, which I thought was going to be massage. But even when I was thinking about massage, I'm like picturing myself doing clients, massaging clients. I'm like, okay, the first client. Okay. No, it's boring. That's boring too. Like I don't even, 
doing it personally and to commit to like a new career, a new uh, gift and a new purpose. I'm like, long term, like, no. So I flirted with the idea of Houston and do a massage from like October to like January. No, basically to like February. And then with the idea of moving out of state and I was like, Tampa. I started looking up Tampa. Don't ask me where it came from, but I started looking at Tampa, St. Petersburg area. And I even found houses and like floor plans. And it's like God was speaking to me then. So my sister needed um, somewhere to live. She was going to uh, Pro River. She's actually graduating next month, y'all. She's going to be a dental hygienist. And I'm so proud of her. I'm proud of you, Lise, if you're watching this. But um, she, that's how I got here in Hattiesburg. She was at the school. She needed somewhere to stay. Lise needed a place. We can live together and get a house in Hattiesburg. And that's where that came from. Everybody's like, and how did you buy a house in Hattiesburg? Because I'm from the coast. They're like, how did you end up up here? That's how, and that's why. And just remember, your life is as much of your life as much as the creator who gave you your life. God gifted us this life. So as much of that is my life, it's his life too. And he's always there. Like, even back then, like I could have been in Florida years ago, but who knew where that path was going to take me? Was I even ready for that? Was I going to be responsible enough? Was I going to be out partying, having people? Like, you just never know. But I needed that time to be here because it's grounded me and I found myself and nobody can influence me. Like, I'm so grounded where I know what I want. I know what I don't want. It's yes and no's. It's not, hmm, that'd be interesting. It's yes and it's no. <laughs> so at this point, it's like PTA, no. Mississippi, no. Houston, I thought was a yes, no. Massage, no. And it's like, Florida, yes. <laughs> the beauty industry, yes. So that's where I'm going, you guys. Oh, it feels so good to say it's only four, 43 days away and I'm just so ready, y'all. But that's been this year. That's been June to April. It hasn't even been a full year. Do y'all understand my pain? Like, can you just can you just feel my pain? Like going through everything I just said I went through from June to April. It hasn't even been an exact month yet. That's a lot of emotions. That's a lot to go through. And, you know, I can harp on all the negative and harp on how hard it was and how much it beat me down. But look at where I'm about to go. And I know there's people that people that's been through way worse. They've lost family members. COVID was last year. People lost their jobs. They lost family members. They might have lost their house. I, I feel that. Because no matter what it is that you lose, it's still a loss. Like the devil and then his his workers, his little, his little worker bees love to try to like keep you down, to try to like make you seem, make it seem like a loss isn't a loss. It don't matter what you lost. A loss is a loss. Grieving is grieving. And it doesn't matter how big or how small it is, it still hurts the same in the same type of pain. Maybe not in the same measure, but it still hurts so old. <laughs> So young to where I don't have all the answers, but so old to where I can't run back to mama and daddy and just have them take it all from me. You know, they help, they have helped me and I want to thank them because I know they're probably watching this too. But I want to thank them because they've been here for me the whole time. They haven't left. So I want to thank all of them, my dad, my mom, my brother, like all my friends, you know, them too. But I wanted to do an intro to this because this is not just me just picking up and moving. This is not... Oh, I'm just living my life day to day. And I'm just, I'll just pick up and move. No, this has been a transformation. This has been a true transformation, a true journey, a true healing that I have been through. It's just been a journey of learning myself and then going through the trials and coming out. And it's like, I see myself, like I know Florida's not going to give me all the answers. And I know my new career isn't going to give me all the answers, but it's getting me closer to my answers. Do you understand? The more you stay in situations that are toxic, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, uh, an environment, uh, a, a state to get there, I have to move. I can't be stagnant. I can't be stagnant in a career that isn't benefiting me. I can't be stagnant in a relationship that isn't benefiting me. And I can't be stagnant in a fucking state, excuse my language, that isn't benefiting me. So I'm moving. I'm moving on with my life. I'm moving on from relationships, from, from men. I'm moving on from this state and I'm starting over. I'm completely starting over. And this was a long intro, but 
that is the rundown, you guys. That's the tea. That's what you were here for. You want to know what Jamila's been doing? It's me. Like, welcome to my life. Welcome to my story. That's just how it goes. But I'm just trying to catch y'all up because it has been pretty much 10 months. Because my videos that I have been posting on here, they've been makeup. They've been skin. They've been uh, cleaning and lifestyle stuff. So I haven't really address the elephant in the room until now. So it feels good and it feels free. And, and it actually, you know, talking about it, it all makes sense. You gotta understand me. You gonna see with these vlogs, I'm me. I am candidly, authentically Mila. Like this is me. And what happened to the jobs? Did I ever get any jobs? No, I didn't. What happened with my old job? That's I will talk about that on another video. We will we will touch on that in a whole another video. You just, you blessed me. Like he thought he was hurting me and at the time it did hurt me, but look at the blessing. Like I'm blessed. Like, no, I'm not working in that field. Yes, he did fire me. Whoop de whoop de woo. I'm moving to Florida and I'm about to be an esthetician. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah. But you won. Yeah, he won. He can have it. He can have it, but like I said, I'm a child of God. Look at it as you go through those trials, you go through those tribulations, but God will not take you through that to fully destroy you. So it's a lot to come. Stay tuned. I hope I inspired you with that intro, but that's just my life. And it's more to come. So that was the past. That's, you know, it's my life, but we're moving forward. So from here on out, we're going to be on positive things and I'm not going to keep talking about the same stuff so refer to this if you have any questions about my past whatever just go back go back because I'm not going to keep doing the same spiel but yeah you guys so I will see y'all in the next what is up you guys let me turn this off so like I was telling y'all in the beginning of the video during my little talk through I am slowly moving. This is a slow process because I still own my home here. Talk about that later. Stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to show y'all what's going on. Hey, go be cool. What's going on right now? Like how my packing is going. Oh, it is Tuesday, April 29th, I believe. Oh, let me check the date. I think that's the date. Yep. No, Tuesday, April 27th. Ooh, I'm a little couple days off. But anyways, it's a couple days away from May 1st. I am moving to Tampa, Florida. Yay! May 14th. Um, And like I said, I still own my home. I'm keeping my house as of right now. Um, So it's a slow move. And I just have two pack things. Basically to have until November 1st. So, excuse my face. I have nothing on my face. This is my skin currently. If y'all have not watched my updated skincare routine and how I cleared my hormonal acne, click down below and go check that out. But let me flip y'all around and show y'all what's going on. I can't even say excuse the mess. I just told you I was moving. So it's going to be a mess, huh, Gooby? Huh, Gooby, go. This my little best friend. She be just watching. You look like you hungry or something. Okay, so let me show y'all. In this big suitcase, this is my closet. In this big suitcase, I have all my summer clothes, supposedly. I already sold some things, gave some things away, and this is what I'm left with. I'm just going to have to like roll it all really good. This is my winter stuff. And like I said, November 1st, I'm officially moving, moving. So I'm probably either going to like sell some of this stuff or just give it away. Um, Because I'm trying to go down there with only things I really, really want. These are shoes that's going to have to go in here. Now I'm packing in here. Um, That's my outfit for May 14th. All this stuff is staying here until November 1st. All the stuff that's still left up hanging. All that is. Um, this is stuff for when I'm about to get my hair braided soon. This is coming with me. That. And then currently what I'm doing is going through my makeup. Seeing what I need to trash. 
I'm going to go through some of these old electronics. Please excuse my hands. I'll talk about that in another video. <laughs> but all that is like electronics and stuff that I got to see what's going to be given away. I got to fold these clothes. Um, My board is coming with me. These things are coming with me. Oh, look at a close up of my toe. And more shoes and my purses are going to go in here. So that's pretty much what it's looking like. I'm going through this stuff because I'm going to finish scrapbooking. So I won't just have stuff just like laying around, but that's pretty much what it's looking like. It's like a pretty easy, like whatever can fit and Coco and my little Hyundai with me. I'm going to take, um, these are the perfumes that I picked out to take with me. The rest of them I'll get in November. Same thing with the jewelry, taking that stuff. Um, my nail stuff is coming with me. Um, all my skincare stuff is coming, but I'm not taking it all like this. I'm going to actually put it in like a bin, one of these bins, these deeper bins, and some of my hair care stuff and take that. But yeah, this is what it's looking like so far. And in the next clip, it should be a better view of what it's looking like. So yeah. Hello, back again. So first, excuse my appearance. I got a little something going on because I'm not getting my hair done yet until Tuesday. It is currently Saturday, May 8th, last Saturday in Mississippi, living in Mississippi, correction. And like I'm saying, excuse how I look because I just braided up my hair. Um, Like I said, I'm not getting it done until Tuesday before I leave next week. And... It's really oily and I'm just going to take the braids out and like wear it kind of crinkly, whatever, whatever. Anyways, it's Saturday, like I said, and I just wanted to show you all what, how I have it packed because it's a little up, updated, a little better than what it was last week. So I'm going to show you all that right now. So walking into the room, we got Tootie. Say hey, Gooby Cool. Hey, I'm wet because I got my face washed. That's the only reason I'm wet. All right, anyways, doing a little scan on the walls. I took down... The pictures that were hanging up there and i put them on the back of my board i was going to bring my board but i got a picture of it so i could just use it as a screensaver and i'm gonna actually leave it and put it on my tv so what these little green sticky tabs are reminders to grab things that i don't forget that are there like as decoration now but that i won't forget I had one up there, but it failed because I'm bringing my dream catcher. I literally got them everywhere. I'm just taking notes. So let's start in the bathroom, I guess. So, so far I have taken all this with me and I'm taking all of this. So pretty much everything is down that I'm taking or has a sticky tab. And everything here, I just haven't taken out yet because I'm still using it daily, but I'm gonna pull these out and use these to travel with i'm not using boxes because literally everything has to fit in my car and then some of the stuff is going to go out of my car into the rv um hello um get my hair done like i said so this is the products that i'm gonna use for my hair but i'm gonna put them back in the drawers my drawers are really really empty really low um this is just a little travel thing i'm gonna end up using this but i got all my travel stuff in here because i have to wash my travel caddy let's see what else we got all this stuff I still have to go through, but no, I'm not taking all this. I just wanted to organize it while I'm in the midst of cleaning and stuff. This is the clean linen I'm going to put on my bed before I go because I'm going to wash this and put it up. Me again. Hello. Um, This is where everything is. Literally, I'm bringing all of this. <laughs> okay, so these two suitcases are filled with shoes. I'm bringing these two backpacks. Some of that stuff is going to go in the backpack. Um, this hamper is filled with like uh, blankets, um, like sweatshirts, jackets, towels. Things are kind of hefty that aren't going to fit in my suitcase. I have to literally roll all of these things to fit in my suitcase. And then these are more products and miscellaneous things that I use daily. My yoga mat, my... What's this? Ring light. Um, These clothes are staying for like when I come back, need something to lounge in. And then these are clothes that I'm wearing within the next week. 
like the clothes I have picked out. That way I won't have to go through here to pick out clothes. Of course, like I said before, all this stuff is staying because it's all winter stuff. And I won't, by the time I get ready to move into my condo or townhome, I can just bring all that then. Let's see what else. Oh, I, know you. I haven't done a video on it yet, but my hands got messed up. Not going to talk about that right now, but I am bringing all this stuff. This is all the stuff to take care of it. All my medicine. This is coming with me as well. Basically, anything with a green tag is coming. Let me show you what the living room is looking like. Y'all save. Anyways, I'm taking this. See, that has take on it. All this has to go in here. And then all my green tea. I already have a teapot, so I'm not taking my teapot. Yeah. That is the update for Saturday, May 8th. Under a week left until I leave. Ah. And that's what I have packed so far. The next time I'm going to show you, it'll be, ooh, not Friday night, Thursday night. Thursday night is the next packing stage that I will show you. So, see you in a little bit. Or see you. back no turning back no negative 
mindset, no negative vibes, just all good things, all good things. So, ah, I'm just so excited. And my girl Dallas did my hair, and then Sean did my haircut. I'm gonna miss them doing my hair. I'm gonna have to find some folks down here. But I, I was like, just in case I don't find nobody in a while, I need something that's gonna last. So these corn rolls could technically stay up for like two months if needed. So, <laughs> and my sides could last me probably about a month, but when I start um, school, I can find somebody at the school to um, cut it for me. It probably just won't be good, but the least they could do is just cut it down so I won't, so that it won't be growing out looking bad. I can't be down there looking bad, y'all. We leaving all the dusty dinginess back up. Like, <laughs> it's not going with me. But I'm just so excited. Like, I just feel good. to stop at Bucky's give me a little gas I'm almost a half a tank gonna fill up get a little breakfast oh look at my body look at that shape girl Germex on. You know, I just washed my hands when I went to the bathroom. So I just stopped. I am in Robertsdale, Alabama, and got my little Bucky's apple pie. Y'all love this. Ever since my dad and sister put me on Bucky's, every time I pass the Bucky's, I gotta get one of these. And this is gonna be my little breakfast. Here's the taste test. Ooh, look how pretty. If you're a foodie, get into this. Look how thick the crust is. Perfecto. I got my little DIY Starbucks drink. I'll show y'all how I made this in another video. And then my water. So we are good to go. Oh. 